Greetings once again to all my fellow watch enthusiasts on YouTube and Facebook and wherever else this video was being seen and shared. Celine Driver once again uh, bringing to you another unboxing and review of a watch that I uh, picked up uh, off of um, a Discord group that I belong to. I'm sure by now you've heard me mention um, uh, my fellow uh, YouTuber and friend, uh, Random Rob. Uh, Random Rob has a very large uh, YouTube channel. Uh, if not at 50,000 subscribers, by the time this video is released, he will have uh, crossed that threshold any minute now. Um, he has a Discord group, in, and in there he has a little um, subgroup called Flipper's Paradise. It's a place where members of the Discord uh, group can go to uh, buy, sell, and trade um, <clears throat> watches. And he also has another one for knives and uh, other stuff as well. Because, of course, all watch collectors are flippers at one level or another. A uh, very nice guy named, uh, who's... Um, Name on the uh, Discord group is Sloop John B. Uh, I I believe, if my memory serves me correctly, there is actually a sloop named the John B. It's supposed to be very famous, but I didn't I didn't research that before I did the video. Anyway, he put up this watch uh, for sale, and I had never owned a uh, a. a solar tuna before and uh the look of the watch intrigued me um the fact that it had a couple of updates already done to it that i would probably do myself um sealed the deal for me and basically on a spur of the moment uh i bought the watch it arrived a few days ago, and um, I've been wearing it ever since. It really is a very nice watch. It is the uh, Seiko SNE Sam Nancy Edward 497 Solar Tuna. It is a part of the uh, Prospex line, and uh, I really like it. Now, this is not the watch that... Um, Sloop John B. sent it in. The watch box was actually uh, much smaller. I had this box lying around, so I, I decided to use this box instead. It's a nicer box. It's a little bit bigger. It can hold more of the accoutrement that uh, came with the watch. Uh, first uh, thing that came with the watch was a, um, <clears throat> pardon me, a uh, uh, Uncle Seiko rubber strap which I'm not going to use because I'm not a big fan of rubber straps it also came with the Seiko manual uh, for the caliber V157 um, in multiple languages so that's nice inside the box we can put that aside for just a second extra uh, links for the um, what is it, uh, Miltate uh, bracelet that was added on, which uh, I like that bracelet. Um, I guess this is the um, original uh, place the watch was purchased, uh, Poco Time in Singapore, and it was purchased back in October of uh, 2019. So I guess a warranty card of sorts and the tool for an add-on, which I'll get to in just a second. So full kit. And believe me when I say that this watch arrived extremely well packed. I mean, uh, um, random Rob skill level uh, packing job. It, as good a packing job as I can do. Uh, as good a packing job as I've ever seen. So kudos to Sloop John B for that. And here is, of course, the watch itself. The Seiko Tuna. Uh, it's, it's nicknamed the Tuna because the profile of the watch looks very much like a tuna can, I guess. Um, 
no lug to speak of. <laughs> I mean, just a little stubby lug, really. It, you know, um, I guess you can call it a lug. It has this very interesting uh, shield around the, uh, or shroud, I should say, around the watch. Uh, the original shroud, unfortunately, didn't come with a watch. It is a black uh, plastic piece. Uh, this was upgraded by Sloop John B to the um, to a stainless steel, polished stainless steel shroud from Yobo Keys. Uh, Yobo Keys. And uh, Sloop John B told me it was an early model. He thinks that later models were... Uh, more of a brushed finish than this one. But you can see that Allen wrench that, that was in the um, package is for these Allen head bolts. And of course, they gave you an extra bolt uh, just in case. So that would have been an upgrade I would have done. I th I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I would have done it. I have ordered a um, Sapphire Crystal for this watch from Crystal Time. Um, it hasn't arrived yet, so we're using the factory crystal. Uh, I may or may not do that right away, um, and I am certainly not going to do it. Uh, I don't have the tools, I don't have the skills, and I don't. I'll, I'll hand it to a watchmaker to do. But beautiful little watch. I mean, really, really like the. Uh, I, I've never had a tuna. I mean, I did have that reissue Arnie. Um, watch at one time. Uh, it's very similar design. Um, I don't know if we count that as a tuna, but uh, this is an actual tuna. Uh, this is a solar tuna, actually. You can see from the tick, tick, tick of the uh, of the second hand, which of course, being in true Seiko fashion, it does not line up with all the indices. But that's why we love these watches, folks. The little imperfections. <laughs> The running joke is if the if a Seiko watch has perfectly lines up everywhere with everything, it's probably a forgery. <laughs> um, you know, maybe that's true. I don't know. Um, screw down crown, unsigned screw down crown it does uh, release very easily and with a very audible pop and a very tactile pop. Um, it is a hacking movement, obviously not a winding movement because it's a quartz. Um, and I love the fact that this thing was, you know, obviously it was still running when I um, <clears throat> when I unpacked it. It was uh, it was set to uh, a different time zone than I was, but it was it was right dead on accurate. Uh, date window at the uh, at the four o'clock blends in very nicely with the watch face, very unobtrusive. Nice bezel action. Um, obviously, with the shroud, you you can only grab it at you know at the uh, one two position and the uh, seven eight position. I mean, you can't grab it here, but it turns easy. Has a good audible 120 click, and it does have a little kickback, but not much. I mean, it's not it's not a Rolex level quality bezel in terms of feel or audibility. But for a Seiko, it's, it's just fine. It, it works very, very well. Um, as I said, this was a uh, Miltate bracelet that was added on by the previous owner. Uh, it is a Jubilee style screw and links. Thank God this isn't a Seiko bracelet with um, pins and collars or I would have dumped it by now. In fact, I wouldn't be making this video. I'd be waiting for something to come in from Strapco or Long Island Watch that would uh, work with this watch and get rid of those pins and collars. I, I refuse to work on another pin and collar uh, bracelet ever. It's just too aggravating. Drilled lugs. So changing out straps and bracelets would probably be as the Brits would say, a doddle. Uh, fold over uh, clasp with double push button deploy, milled out. Very nice. Uh, very limited on the um, 
on the uh, micro adjust. Uh, I did play around a little bit with it. Uh, it came this way with these links on there and set to that. Uh, I played around with it a little bit to see if I could find something better. I did not. Uh, so evidently uh, Sloop John B's wrist and my wrist are pretty much the same size. There's your wrist shot on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. It is a big watch. Don't get me wrong, this is a big boy. But it doesn't wear as big as it is in diameter. We'll get into that in a minute. But as you can see from the uh, uh, the down the barrel shot, the you know, with no lug to speak of, it just you know, it just sits there. And it, it, there's no overhang, there's no stretch down there. These links drop away very uh, nicely uh, from the uh, from the watch so you know it's pretty much the width you have is the width you get and it is a tall watch I mean you're not going to get this thing under uh, under a dress cuff or a fitted long sleeve but fit under a jacket easy enough and it, I mean and I wore this thing all 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 day yesterday and I've been wearing it pretty much all this morning <clears throat> up to when I made in fact I, I made this while I, I made this I, I wore this while I was exercising and uh, very unobtrusive got the little Seiko wave on the back the prospects X on there I, and, and, you know, the, the condition of this watch when I got it was shocking to me. I mean, it just, it looked like John, uh, Sloop John B never wore the bloody thing. I mean, he said he wore it very little uh, and he's gentle on his watches. But I mean, this thing looked factory fresh. It, this, this thing looked like it never worn at all. So, uh, you know, and he gave me a nice deal on the watch. So, I mean, he didn't try and gouge me to death. So, kudos to him. Got my sheet of facts here so I can go over the vital statistics with you. As I said, this is the Seiko SNE497 Prospects Solar Tuna. Black dial, black uh, bezel insert. I couldn't find anywhere what the bezel material is. It, I, I'm not really sure what it is. I, I would hesitate to say it was sapphire, uh, not sapphire, ceramic. But it might be, it might also be aluminum. So uh, if anybody knows, please drop that in the comments so other people can benefit from your knowledge because I couldn't find it. Uh, maybe I didn't look hard enough. Um, it is a true 200 meter diver. Uh, it is a screwed down case back, it is screwed down crown. Uh, it's it's set to be a 200 meter diver and the way it's built I believe it it's powered by the Seiko V157 solar quartz with a 10 month power reserve uh, if it's beginning to lose power it will go into the uh, once every two second uh, movement instead of ticking every second it'll tick every two seconds that's how you know that the uh, battery needs to be charged up. Uh, very accurate movement uh, from Seiko. The V157 is rated at plus minus 15 seconds per month, which works out to be, what, a half second a day? Typical month, 30 days. So 15 seconds, and if I can do math right, that's half a second a day. Uh, I'll take that. <laughs> um, I'll take that all day, no pun intended. Uh, 46.7 millimeter diameter, so it is a very big watch. Uh, due to the fact that the lugs are so stubby, they, they barely poke out of the case, and the fact that that bracelet pretty much drops away from the watch at, at a 90 degree angle means um, uh, it, it's, um, it's not gonna wear as big as it is in diameter. 46.7 millimeter uh, diameter, 22 millimeter lug, draw lugs. Um, let's see, 12.4 millimeters thick. I had to measure that. 
myself. I couldn't find that thickness measurement online. So I measured that with my caliper and it said 12.4 millimeters. So pretty sure I got that right. Actually, I'm pretty sure I got that wrong. That doesn't look like 12.4 millimeters. So I may have misread my caliper. Um, whatever. I'm wrong. I made a mistake. I'll leave it in there. If somebody knows what the uh, thickness is, uh, you can drop that in the comments too. Uh, 45.6 millimeter on the tip to tip. I can believe that because uh, the lugs are just, I mean, these aren't really lugs. I mean, they're stubs. <laughs> Hard Lex Crystal. Uh, I have ordered a Crystal Times Sapphire Crystal uh, Double Dome uh, Clear AR Coating. Uh, when it comes in, I'll make a decision on when I'll uh, have it installed. I'll have to shop that job around. I'll have to find a local place that'll do that um, without jacking the watch up. But otherwise, I'm I'm very happy with this with this purchase. I purchased this thing as a you know oof, that's case back is smeared pretty badly. There we go. Let's see if that's better. That's a little better. I purchased this watch to be one of my uh, one one of my go to grab and go daily wear watches uh, that looked different. You know, it wasn't something that you saw on everybody else's wrist. Uh, owing to the uh, tuna shape, uh, and I, I like it. I really, I really like this watch. I'm glad I picked it up, and I'm glad that uh, Mr. Sloop John B sold it to me. So I appreciate it. So shout out to him. And that's why I'm going to end the video. If you have the opportunity to grab one of these, uh, do it. It's a great looking watch. It really is. I wonder what it would look like with a Pepsi dial, a Pepsi bezel. I bet that would look pretty uh, smart. But I'm going to leave that alone. So if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you would click that thumbs up button for me. Uh, that does help with the channel growth that I am uh, always got my eye on. Uh, the more likes, the more thumbs up a video gets, the more likely that video is to appear in a YouTube search uh, via the YouTube search algorithms. And the more likes a video has, in a successful search, the higher up on that search, a video will appear. Comments, questions, suggestions down below, I do read them all. I do respond to them all. However, if you're going to be a nasty little piece of uh, human trash, a.k.a. a troll, uh, and you're going to leave links to bad places on the Internet, or you're going to just flat out insult me and my, and my uh, subscribers, I'm just going to do what I always do. I delete the comment and I block the commenter. If you're new to the channel, uh, welcome. I'm glad you found the, the place. I'm glad uh, you uh, stopped by to watch the video. I hope you were entertained. Uh, feel free to watch as many videos as you want. I have over 450 of them uh, currently. All I ask is that before you leave, uh, you click the subscribe button. And when you do, please click the bell icon next to it so that when I upload new content, you are alerted. Or when I do live streams, which I do every Wednesday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, or at other times during the week as time and opportunity allow, uh, you will be alerted to those streams. Meanwhile, uh, be careful out there. It's a dangerous old world out there. I hope you're being uh, safe and staying healthy. And I will see you in my next video.